Hey everybody and welcome to the Let's Look At you have all been waiting for. Long overdue, but this is Let's Look At Pro Cycling Manager Season 2012. Uh, that is not because it is the year 2012, this is actually the 2012th season uh, of Pro Cycling Manager. The first version of this came out back in year zero. Uh, it was pretty crazy uh, back when Jesus Christ was big on the, uh, the Tour de France. Back before front, Tour de France, I don't know what I'm... This has gone too far. Let me start out by saying that I am absolutely 100% unqualified to make a review of a game like Pro Cycling Manager Season 2012. For one, I haven't played Season 2011, so I don't know if I'm missing out on some kind of story beats or something, but mainly, this is a simulator about what it's like to manage the lives and actually the behaviors and actions within a race of, of pro cyclists, uh, a sport that I know basically zero about. So, this is basically just a curiosity for me, so I'm just getting that off the way to say, for all of my impressions of this game, I'm not gonna go out on the limb and say it's bad, because I feel like if you're watching this video, you're one of two people. You're either here to see how ridiculously mundane and detailed a simulator about something you don't care at all about is, or you're like, man, I have always dreamed of managing a pro cycling team. If you're the latter person, just go out and buy this game, what else are you gonna buy? Is there like an amateur cycling team leader 2012? I don't think so. Anyway, we're just gonna get started here. I'm gonna play single player. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to load my last saved game. So this will load me into kind of our interface here. So if you've ever played a simulator before, particularly something like Football Manager, this will probably look uh, very similar to you. So we start, we've got like our email here and this will tell us certain stuff that is important for us. I've probably played about an hour and a half of this so far, so I'm still, a lot of it is kind of incomprehensible to me, but I probably won't be playing too much more of it, so I wanted to get a, a let's look at it while I was nice, fresh, and probably knew as much as I would ever know about this game. So we got emails here telling us, you know, teams for this uh, Paris race that's coming up. I am the comm cycling team, just let me move my microphone a little bit. I'm the comm cycling team, as you can see down here in the bottom left, so we're part of this race, that's cool. We're also part of the Tour de France coming up, and there's this wildcard stuff that isn't important to me, so we're gonna delete all that. You can spend a lot of time in your email and a lot of time on your calendar. So let's go to that. This is our race calendar. So we've already completed uh, like two races. The Australian Championships, if we look at the results for that. Uh, I didn't even come close here. Actually, I, I didn't do too bad. You can see Com Cycling Team Cape Irwins did all right in that one in his, in his native land. And we also had a Down Under Tour, which I competed in. And we finished... I thought we did okay in this. Where are we? Not stage one, I want overall. Hmm, maybe I can't figure this out. Well, we won stage two, which is cool, with Philippe Gilou. I'm not sure, is that... Oh, I'm gonna kill myself for getting this wrong. Is that the Belgian flag or the German flag? I can never remember. It sounds German. Or sorry, it sounds Belgian is what I meant to say. Uh, anyway, I can't remember how we finished here in the end, but I thought we did pretty good. We finished in like, I don't know, top ten. But anyway, I'm... Maybe not top 10, but I'm uh, getting sidetracked here. Let's check out our calendar. You can see that we have a Grand Prix de Marseille coming up in 129, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 days. So what we're going to do is actually schedule a training camp. So we are the manager. We're not actually one of the riders. We spend most of our time like buying equipment, scouting for new riders to sign to our team, and booking training camps. So we can take a look around here. It is January 24th, so let's look for a like preseason training camp that runs in January. How about this? I apologize again for all this European uh, dialect, <laughs> that's definitely a misnomer, but all this like Spanish, French stuff that I'm going to mispronounce uh, horribly. I'm a native English speaker and don't speak too much of any other language, so uh, you can see that this training camp here in Spain, Palma de Majorique in Spain, uh, runs January to February, costs 300 euros per participant, and they get a hotel of normal standing. And we can choose a daily program for at least eight riders. So let's book this, and we're going to book some of our best riders in here. Irwins is one of our top riders, as is Rohi and Jalu. We definitely want all of them. As well as uh, Santumgogo. I feel like I'm mispronouncing this awfully. That's okay. And we got some of these other guys that we've taken with us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we need one more. Who has gone with us on some of these trips as well? How about M Burger? Mmm, burger. So we will book him, all of these guys, into uh, this for three days. This is going to take us from the 25th to the 27th. And then we'll get to do a race after this, but I just wanted to show you kind of like the pre-race stuff that you can actually do yourself as well. So we have another race going on today that we're not taking part in. What we can do here is then program our training camp. So this is the, the degree of control we have over this. We can choose uh, the intensity 
of what we want our people to do. So what I like to do is let's start them off. Remember, this is three days. Uh, we'll do the first day, like, a little intense. So this is ranked in order of intensity. We'll do 80% of an hour at a sustained pace with a difficult route. So we'll do that. Uh, and we will then delete all of our email messages here, advance the next day. Oh, what requires our attention? Queen Noto is ill. Assign a doctor. Okay, I've never done that before. Uh, then we'll go to the next day. We'll have to do the training camp again. Oh, he fully healed. That was pretty quick. So we can look at our program for the day. We can also see uh, who did no, who had no difficulty and who had problems on the last route. So it looked like everyone was pretty much middling in that. So then we'll do like the hardest today. This is the way that I prefer to run my training camps. Three quarters of an hour intensive work on a difficult route. And then we'll go on to the next day. And we'll see how people did on that. Uh, report on previous day. All right, everyone seemed okay on that. And then for our last day of training camp, we will set our riders to do uh, two thirds of an hour at recovery pace. That might be two or three hours recovery pace, I don't know. Uh, this is gonna allow them to heal a little bit because they're gonna have a race coming up very soon. So we'll get through all this. I'm gonna delete all these emails now. I don't think anything requires my attention, so we'll advance. And then we'll actually get started on an actual race here. So the Grand Prix of Marseille. If we advance again, it should take us to the interface. You can see here the layout of the race, or the layout of the course. I have to warn you, uh, if you're thinking about getting this game, I picked this up in the Steam sale myself for 50% off, so it was like 20 bucks, and it's one of those things that's just like uh, a curiosity for me. Uh, if you're not a big, big cycling fan, you're probably not going to get 20 to $40 worth out of this game, because if you do a detailed race or a detailed simulation, these races can be, you know... Uh, Let's make sure that the, some of the riders we took on that trip are actually here. Let's get some of these guys off. That guy was recently sick, so I don't want him. Uh, we want Rohi. We want Burger. Oh, we've already got him. We want Irwins. And why not uh, Santam Gogo as well? Uh, yeah, like these detailed simulations you can see down here at the bottom. Quick simulation just does the race. Like you choose, you can choose your frame, front wheel, rear wheel, helmet, stuff like that. I don't really mess around with this stuff too much. Uh, or you can do detailed simulation or 3D race. So we're gonna start with 3D race. And I'm probably gonna quit halfway through this. Because uh, it, it's gonna take us a long ass time and I can't provide commentary over a bike race that's like 30 to 45 minutes long. Uh, in real time it would be like four and a half hours. In this it's more like 20 to 30 minutes I would say overall. I've sat through two of these so far. Uh, okay, so we're gonna actually set our leader to uh, Philippe Gilou because he's got our best chance of success, I think. And we will set all these other guys to be teammates or free elements, which will just allow them to do their own thing. So let's start our 3D race here. It's gonna take a second to load in. Graphically, the game looks all right. It's nothing special. Uh, normally when I play simulators, especially when I play them on the PC, which is obviously where like 95% of simulators come out, I expect them to look gorgeous because that's kind of one of the appeals. If you're gonna be spending like hours and hours in a game like this that you know, it's going to be super in-depth, but very narrow in terms of its scope. Uh, you you want it to look gorgeous, because you're going to spend a lot of time inhabiting that world. However, I don't think this looks that fantastic. That was not a good look right there. But, I mean, they are modeling, of course, as you can see, like hundreds and hundreds of riders here. So this race will get started in a second here. Uh, it's having slight frame rate problems, but I haven't had that outside of my recording software. So when we get started here, uh, this guy will just start pulling away with his megaphone. Looks kind of like the G-Man from Half-Life. Very, uh, very snar smart cardigan and collared shirt combo on him there, though. Uh, we can now micromanage our riders if we wanted to a certain extent. So you can see this is our roster over here on the right. So we can take Philippe Gilou. Obviously, he is, like, our number one dude. So we want to make sure that he is uh, close to the front of the pack at the end of this race, which is how long? 138 kilometers. Long time. <laughs> but like I said, these races typically only take like 20 to 30 minutes from what I've seen so far. I'm not sure if there's an option to set them on real time. I'm not sure you would want that, spending like four and a half hours on a real time bike race. But who am I to tell you what you want? If you're a fan of cycling, maybe this is what you're into. So let's go back uh, and I'll explain what the heck's going on here. Let's start with uh, Pinaroli because he is not one of my like premier riders. So I can kind of abuse him and waste his energy. If you look on the left here, where my mouse pointer is right now, you can see you've got things like his heart rate, there's like a tube, that's his energy gel, and when you apply that, his like, red meter fills up a little bit faster after it's been depleted. As far as I can tell, the yellow meter is like overall energy, and the red meter is like burst energy. Consider like a like a boost meter in a, in a racing game, or if you're more in like a uh, like kinesiology, it's more like a glycogen store or something. So this will rebuild throughout the, throughout the race. We also have his water bottles here, and we have a list of commands that we can set him to do, for example. 
We can set Pinaroli to attack right now, and then he will try his damnedest to, like, work his way through this thick pack, which is not going to be very, very easy for him right now. Uh, or we can set him to maintain position, or we can do Relay, Infinite Relay, which I think is just, like, get in front of your teammate, then have them draft you, then have them get in front of you, etc., etc., to save energy. We can get some new water bottles which once our uh, previous water bottles run out, or we could apply our energy gel if we need more glycogen for, like, a sprint at the finish or something. We also have this cursor that we can move back and forth here to give them more energy, but, of course, the further you move this to the right, the more that yellow meter is going to deplete as things go along here. So let's go back uh, to... Philippe Gilou. I'm sorry to tell you, we're not going to stick in this mode for too, too long because things don't really get any more exciting than this. I mean, the start of the race is the most boring because there's not really that much opportunity for movement, but eventually the, the pack will, will start to split a little bit. People will make breakaways and we'll have a chance for our rider to get up to the top. But that this is the most boring part of this simulator by far is actually being inside the bike race. Uh, and also the least successful for me. Like I've tried micromanaging my riders as much as I can, like getting them into relays and stuff like that. Uh, drafting it and only making breakaways when you don't need to conserve your energy and stuff like that uh, and I've lost every single time whereas I've won some quick simulation ones just from setting things up I think the best way so we'll actually load back into our last save game here uh, and I think we will just do a quick simulation of the race instead so yes this is the lineup that I want those are the racers I've been using primarily so let's change uh let's go back actually a little bit and see what kind of layout we have for this so it looks pretty hilly so we're gonna want something that is pretty good on like mountains i would say so let's look at these frames mountain is bad 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 also bad so i guess it doesn't matter let's just go with the s bike because it sounds cool and then for tires looks like this is our best overall front and rear tire then for helmet i don't think the helmet changes too much so it doesn't really matter so we'll go with this Set up a quick simulation. I think this is all good. Uh, you know, similar to Football Manager, you can take these guys and actually set their preferences. So we have our leader in Philip Gilou. This is the guy we want to actually defeat or win the race, or actually like come the best in our race for our team, if that's possible. Uh, and then we will let's make this guy the sprinter because he's like our second most powerful or second best average, which is like overall score in like a Madden or an NHL game or something like that. Uh, but what I was going to say is similar to a football manager, we can set these guys to uh, do or exhibit specific behaviors in order to improve our chances of winning the race. So for example, uh, we can make him a lead out man for Philip Gilou Gilou. Again, I apologize like profusely for my uh, mispronunciations here. We can also, uh, how about take part in chase? Oh, I can't click that actually. Take part in chase after breakaway if it contains a dangerous rider. Lead out man. Uh, and how about ride with breakaways without taking part to help his leader. And then we can go back to Marco Sumtumgogo here and do the same thing. Take part in chase after breakaway riders. He can be a lead out man as well. Uh, and then let's check out our free element guys here like Marcus Berger. Let's see. Sure, take part in the final sprint. And we could also maybe make him... Yeah, take risks. Why not? And for Philip Jaloux, just have a normal ride, man. Just, just do your damnedest. And we can do a quick simulation here and see how things turn out. We actually won! <laughs> what can I say? I'm a fantastic uh, manager. And we actually... Our Cape Irwins came in fifth here as well, which is really good. Kind of didn't expect that. And for our race report, do we have anything particular? We can see how, like a post-mortem of how our guys did. Burger tried just like you asked him, but he couldn't do it. It's a shame. How about Rohi? Rohi didn't do shit. Physically not up to the task. That sucks. That's good, I guess. But anyway, we uh, we succeeded during that, which is cool. And now I think we have more. Yeah, we have like the whole Grand Prix, Grand Prix de Marseille here, which is substantial length to be damn sure. But let's see what we got going on here. Congratulations! This year the destiny of the national team of France or Swiss will be in your hands. Good luck to you. Uh... I've never done any national team management so far. Let's go with Switzerland. How about the results of this? I wasn't even taking part in that. Cool, cool, cool. We'll just advance again. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm up to the task of managing a national team. Uh, let's just do one. Let's do a detailed simulation, perhaps. And because I haven't taken a look at that so far, I've only done 3D race, 3D races, and um, the uh, quick simulations. But it seems like quick simulation is where it's at for me. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to sit there and watch a 45-minute cycling race where you have limited control, Quick Simulation is for you. Actually, this probably just isn't the game for you, but if you've already purchased it like me, that's, I think, how you can make the best of your opportunities. 
so I don't know, this is like break, training, we have a training camp starting right now? I'm not sure if I want that actually, I kind of just want to start this race. Um, whatever, let's just get started. Do I have any pressing matters? Doesn't seem so. Cool, we have like a much smaller list of potential riders because I sent all of my good guys away to a training camp. Let's check out detailed simulation. Oh man, I am not up to this task at all. Catch up on pace 40 kilometers, accelerate rhythm 15 kilometers, catch up leaders 50 kilometers. Ah uh, yes, accelerate if a leader falls behind. Who is going to be our leader? Tim Phoney? You got it. Uh, attack at a specified distance before the finish. Zero kilometers? Eh, that's not really what I want. Go for the points jersey, man. You can do it. Let's try our detailed simulation here and see how this works. Oh lord, it's simulating race down at the bottom. I'm hoping it's not going to load us in and we'll have to watch it. But anyway, like, this is the kind of thing that's weird because, oh, we can actually speed up time this way. So where's our, where's our teammates? I forgot, what was our leader's name? It's like Phony? Let's just go straight to the end. <laughs> Did we finish anywhere here? He finished 29th. Frunky beat you. Embarrassing. Uh, quit. Alright, so I'm not really sure what else to say about where did we finish here not even not very good at all 26th and 29th well that's what i get for having like my best riders not even take part in it but anyway uh this is pro cycling manager 2012 i'm honestly not sure what i expected i bought it as a curiosity and you know as a curiosity it will stay because this is the kind of game where you know like all simulators 99.5 percent of the population this will not appeal to at all but that 0.5 percent it seems competent it hasn't like crashed on me or anything like that uh, it seems like there's a lot of depth here, so if you're the kind of guy who's, like, ever since he was a kid, who's, like, always wanted to, ma always wanted to manage a pro cycling team, uh, this, you know, maybe is the game for you. For everybody else, stay away, but it doesn't seem bad. It just seems, you know, what would be the word? Inaccessible, maybe, is the one you want. i n x s -I -I uh, also, what I really wanted to show in this video is that you do not have, like, direct control over the cyclers. So it's not like you're, uh, setting the decisions for them and then you're actually, like, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger to pedal or something like that. You're, you're just, like, watching it happen and kind of, like, coaching, like, dictating orders from the side to a certain extent. But anyway, that's Pro Cycling Manager Season 2012. Uh, like I said, 99.5% of the people buying or watching this should not buy it. It will be a waste of money for you. Not to say it's a bad game, but for the other 0.5%, you know, you're probably going to buy this whatever it costs. So my opinion, I guess, doesn't really matter that much. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.